Hi again everyone. In this video we're going to see how we can apply Laplace transforms to solve initial value problems involving ordinary differential equations. And the particular example we're going to look at involves this differential equation here and these initial conditions. And you can see that the right hand side, the so-called forcing term or forcing function, is the heavy side step function. Now the heavy side step function is a discontinuous function and in this case the jump occurs at t equals 1. So to the left of 1 the function on the right hand side is just 0. To the right of 1 the function is 1 and at 1 the function is one half. So what we're going to learn today is how we can use Laplace transforms to solve these kinds of problems. And to do that, what we're essentially going to do is transform this problem, solve the transformed problem, and then untransform everything. And basically it uses the Laplace transform and the inverse Laplace transform. Now a important identity that we're going to use in this example is this starred identity here the transform of derivatives identity now if there was a y prime down here as well or y dash we would use the first one also so let me just refer to this differential equation as d and let me show you how to how to solve this problem So what I'm going to do is take the Laplace transform of both sides Now I'm just going to drop the um, arguments of t down here just to save a little bit of space. Now because the Laplace transform is a linear operator, it means I can expand this left hand side. Now, what we're going to do over here is apply the starred identity, the transform of derivatives, where big Y of S is just the Laplace transform of little y of t. So, changing this also to big Y of S, I can apply the starred transform of derivatives. So on the left hand side I'm going to get something like this. So my term here is going to be big Y of S. And on the right hand side, well, I can actually look this Laplace transform up or calculate it directly. If I look down my left hand side, my table of Laplace transforms, here and I look over to the right, well this is the Laplace transform of the heavy side step function, in our case c equals 1. Okay, so so now what I can do is substitute in the initial conditions here and here, so I'm incorporating the initial conditions, and then what I'd like to do is rearrange and solve for big Y of S. Okay, so if we look back, this is going to be zero, and I'm going to get a minus S here. What I'm going to do is factor out the big Y of S, pull the other S's to the other side, and I'll get 
something like this. Now if I just make big Y this the subject, I've actually solved the transformed or the modified problem. So what I would like to do now is actually untransform everything. So I want to take the inverse Laplace transform of this and I'll, out will pop my solution to the initial value problem little y of t. So let's do that. So what we want here is we take the inverse Laplace transform of both sides here to form little y of t. Now because the inverse transform is also a linear operator, it means I can expand in a similar way as before. Okay, so the challenge then is to calculate these two transforms. Now the first one's easy, we can look that up on a table of transforms. So if we look this up, I'll see that the inverse transform is cos of t in our case, but this one is not so easy to calculate. So what we're going to have to do is break this up a bit. Now it's quite easy you could use partial fractions, but it's, it's not, not necessary. What I'm going to do is add s squared and take away s squared from the top. Now, if I bracket it in this way and turn this into two parts, You'll see in each term I can cancel and cancel. Oops, S. Okay, so I didn't really need partial fractions there. I could do it without it. So let's um, ex ex write this in this way by multiplying through by e to the minus s and let's calculate our inverse transforms. So, the inverse transform here is just cos of t, and the first term from this part up here will be the following. So if we go to our table of transforms, you can see that the Laplace transform of the heavy side step function is just this, and in our case c equals 1. And finally, we need to take the transform, the inverse transform of this times e to the minus s. Now for this, it, it's not contained strictly in our table, but we're going to have to use the second shifting theorem to calculate this. So our, our particular um, function of s is like this with c equals 1. So what we want to do is calculate little g of t and then shift it and then multiply through by this heavy side step function. So
Now we saw before that the inverse transform of this is just cosine t. The second shifting theorem. gives the following. It's the following form, so I replace t with t minus 1 in brackets and get the following. Okay, so that's a lot of stuff that we've calculated, so let's just take stock. These are the three terms that we're interested in. We just have to put them together in the right way. Well, it's going to be this plus this minus this because of the minus here. Okay, so let's combine everything. Okay, so we've now solved our original initial value problem. Okay, so hopefully you could see um, some sort of step-by-step -step solution there. What I've done with the bigger picture is to actually explicitly state those steps. So here they are just as a nice little checklist for solving these kinds of problems via Laplace transforms. Now, I've left you an example to solve here. It's very similar to the, the um, example that I solved. But I'm also going to leave you with another question. Can you sketch the solution, sketch the graph of the solution, and see what happens to the graph for t before 1, or t less than 1, and t greater than 1?